He's Howard Eibach, a former copywriter and creative director and the author of two books on the creative brief. And he's Henry Gomez, an ad agency strategist with over 26 years of experience. Together, we're the Brief Brothers. We love to talk about creative briefs, briefing, and advertising. We're back, Henry. Today, we're doing a special. We haven't done this in a while. It's our classic creative review. We've done creative reviews before, but this time we're going back in history, this time to the 1980s. And we found three classic spots that I think all of us remember. Actually, we remember two of them. One for me was kind of new, and I think for new, new for you as well, was a spot that aired um, in the UK in the 1980s. And that's the one we're going to start with. It's, help me again, who's the agency? It came out in 1983 for the Yellow Pages. Yeah, it is, uh, the agency is Abbott, Mead, and Vickers. Okay, so this is a... This is a spot. We're going to pause now and take a look, and we're going to come back and talk about it. Let's take a look. I don't suppose you have a copy of Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley. It is rather old. It's by J.R. Hartley. Good old yellow pages. We don't just help with the nasty things in life, like a blocked drain. We're there for the nice things, too. You do? Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, can you keep it for me? My name, oh yes, it's J.R. Hartley. All right, Henry, what'd you think? An, a very interesting spot. You know, it's a, in a way, it's a form of product demo um you know using in this case a sympathetic character you see this man he's kind of downtrodden he's trying to find this book um that uh there's an element of surprise at the end of course the wink and the nod which is that he's the author of the book that he's been looking for um and so you know, there's definitely you get like some warm feeling, but within that is the idea that, you know, the yellow pages saves you time, right? Like there's, and you can cover much more ground with the yellow pages. And, you know, for some of our viewers, they may not even know what the hell we're talking about, right? But before Google <laughs> and before the internet, um, the way you found out about businesses that you need uh, or you want to might be doing want to do business with was through the yellow pages and there were ads in the yellow pages so and and it, it was a directory and so um in this particular case you know it th there's a there's a definitely a brand benefit that's communicated which is that it saves you time and trouble um when you can and in the u.s we had for a long time the the tagline right for the yellow pages which was let your fingers do the walking Right. right, which right. is a, a brilliant tagline in its own right, um, mm -hmm. because it basically says what the benefit of, 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 of the Yellow Pages was or is. So they still exist, by the way, but uh, I found that out the other day. They still exist. You were um, far between. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think that well done. Of course, you know, everything feels dated. Uh, everything we're going to look at today feels dated because it was kind of the 80s. But um, I, I thought there was, a, you know, that insight about there was also something else. There was a line of copy that said it's not only for like plug drains, like it's not just for an, an emergency, right? Like you can use the yellow pages to, for, to fulfill your hobbies or your whatever it is that you're looking for. It's all there. So there's kind of that secondary promise in addition to less hassle is how all encompassing the yellow pages are. So it delivers a very textured and layered message, you know, all, you know, in about 50, I think the spot was about 53 seconds. It, a great job, I thought. Yeah, me too. This is incredibly charming. You know, you were the one who really uh, clued me into guys like Mark Ritson and Byron Sharp. So I'm a lot more aware of the whole notion of mental availability. Of course, I've read a couple of books by Paul Feldbook. So we've been talking a lot about the, the importance of be, making a brand famous and, you know, entertainment, the entertainment aspect. 
Now, whether they were aware of all these concepts in the 80s, I can't say, but this is an entertaining spot. This is a story, a little story about a guy who's going out to look for a book. He can't find it and he's doing it the hard way. So I love the fact that we're going from old, you know, classic British used bookstores. And I'm a fan of a movie called 84 Charing Cross Road, which is a, about correspondence between a, a British used bookstore and a, an American writer. Um, uh, so, and if you know about that, great. If you don't, no big deal. But the other thing that really caught my attention about this spot was something that we discussed in a previous episode, or maybe it's a future episode because I don't know when we're going to air this. But I've always had this um, problem addressing attendees to my workshops about how you identify your, your, your audience, your target audience. I was thinking the same thing that this is, goes hand in hand with that. This, this spot does a great job. We have to kind of reverse engineer to figure out what the brief might have been. But this spot does a great job of using one person to explain what this universally accepted, universally understood product does for millions of people. And, and it's done in a charming way. The guy is looking for a copy of his own book. You know, as an author myself, of course, my books aren't available in bookstores. You have to buy it online, but I get it. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to find a copy of something that matters to me. To him, it's a problem. It's not a plug drain. You know, it's not I'm locked out of my house. I need to get to the locksmith there, but it's still something he wants. And he's been, you know, tiring himself out trying to find it. So this does a great job of, of, of talking to everybody by talking to one person or, or showing us the travails of one person. It does it in a charming, entertaining way. I kind of miss these spots. It's yep. well done. I, I, I agree. And I think the point about the target audience is like, yes, everybody at that time could use the yellow page. But the question when you drill down is, what is your need state when you're using the yellow pages? And so this does a good job of articulating some of that. It's like when you're frustrated of having pounded the pavement and not been able to find it, when um, you don't have the time, right? Uh, so th it's, again, drill down into a need state, that's a way to define a target audience, like with the VIX example that we gave in that other episode, so. Right. Great okay, spot. so our, our next next spot is also a classic that we all remember, and it had it had life in the, in the political realm too, because Walter Mondale ended up using the classic line from this spot in a debate that he had with Gary Hart some years later. It's for Wendy's and it's, where's the beef? Let's take a look. It certainly is a big bun. It's a very big bun. Big fluffy bun. It's a very big fluffy bun. Where's the beef? Some hamburger places give you a lot less beef on a lot of bun. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, we serve a hamburger we modestly call a single. And Wendy's single has more beef than the Whopper or Big Mac. At Wendy's, you get more beef and less bun. Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. All right, Henry, we did a little trip down memory lane. This is something familiar to, to a lot of Americans. What what brings what comes to mind when you when you see this spot again? Now I'm having doubts if we if we reviewed this one before, but if we did, it doesn't matter. No, we can review no, it we again. Have, no, okay. We haven't reviewed it. We've talked we've talked about it. We've talked about memorable lines, but we haven't reviewed this spot that I recall. Yeah. So I I think that uh, that you know this is one of the classic examples of when a piece of advertising enters the pop culture and you gave the example that Walter Mondale said it in a, in a debate, but it was on everybody's, you know, mind was this little bitty old lady saying, where's the beef. And for me, this has always been a, an example that I use when clients are getting to see and say about casting and commercials, because they think the, the simple minded view is, I have to show my target audience in the commercial. And like with the previous one we just reviewed, the target audience isn't old authors, right? And the target audience here isn't little old ladies. They're a vehicle to deliver a message to a broader audience, right? So we're laughing somewhat with the old lady and a little bit at her. I mean, frankly, because she's, you know, she's funny. She, where's the beef, right? And so we all kind of, can relate to a granny or an auntie that 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 has this um, kind of 
where's the beef type of, you know, inflection and tone. And, and so to me, it's, it's like, remember, like we could do a spot targeting women that only has men in it. Right. Or we could do that. Doesn't it, there's no reason that you have to, it has to be so didactic that it's only that you show the target audience in the spot, but this was, you know, just the comic genius of it. It took a true insight, right. Which was that fast food consumers were recognizing that they were getting shortchanged more and more by the, by the big, you know, uh, burger companies. And that, you know, when these single is a quarter pound, and that's what it is. And it's not going to shrink and it's not going to, the, the bun isn't getting bigger. And so um, just, you know, great acting, r- r- great directing, comedically timed. It, it deserves to be on, on a list of top spots. Absolutely. My recollection is that we, we may have shown a, a clip from that spot in a previous episode, but we were talking about classic lines that have been abandoned. Now, I know that Where's the Beef wasn't uh, Wendy's tagline, but it was one of those memorable lines that, like you said at the beginning, is now part of our uh, culture, our pop culture. We just, it's part of our language, part of our nomenclature. To the point, to the point, by the way, that if, if they ran a spot tomorrow under the premise of Where's the Beef, a lot of people would still remember and recognize it and yeah. and 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 it, it and it could still be true to the brand like in the the vein of your discussion which is that brands often abandon things that are working for them like being all about the beef is a good thing to be in 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 the fast food um category so absolutely well i'm going to come back to something i, I mentioned in the yellow pages review which is I guess I'm just a lot more mindful these days of the importance of, and in the absence today of great entertainment in TV spots that I'm seeing. Now, I don't watch a lot of live television, but I do keep track of stuff. And, and, and Henry, I have to say thank you to you for sending me this list tonight. I'm watching there's a, the, the top 100 list and watching some of these old spots just brought back a lot of memories. Um, but there's a great deal of entertainment as well as storytelling that just seems to be absent in today's advertising. And this just took me back. It's a powerful message. And I love your comment about target audience. You know, we've been talking about target audience in in the previous episode. This is a great example of, and just like the Yellow Pages spot, it's not the target audience or only the target audience, but they represent a mindset. So we're, we're aligned. We're absolutely aligned on this spot. It's a great classic. Okay, and our last classic is for FedEx, and it's called The Fast Talking Man. This, uh, this water, the water cooler conversation after this spot broke was pretty intense. I remember this when this came out. It was really popular. So let's take a look. Okay, Eunice Travel Plans, I need to be in New York on Monday, LA on Tuesday, New York on Wednesday, LA on Thursday, New York on Friday, got it? Got it. Got it. So you want to work here, what really makes you think you deserve a job here? Well, sir, I think on my feet, I'm going to figures and have a sharp mind. Excellent, can you start on Monday? Yes, sir, absolutely, without hesitation. Congratulations, welcome aboard. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And in conclusion, Jim, Bill, Bob, call Fred, load, dork, eight of them, Ted. Business is business, and as we all know, in order to get something done, you got to do something. In order to do something, we got to get to work, so let's get to work. Thank you for taking the meeting. PD did a bang-up job. I'm putting you in charge of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, perfect. I know it's perfect, Peter. That's why I picked Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's perfect. Peter, may I call you Pete? Call me Pete. Pete. There's a Mr. Schnittler here to see you. Home to wait 15 seconds. Can you wait 15 seconds? I'll wait 15 seconds. Congratulations on your deal in Denver, Dave. I'm putting you down to deal with Dallas. Don, is it a deal? Do we have a deal? It's a deal. I got to go. I got a call coming in. Hi, Doc. Just dealt with Don. In this fast moving, high pressure, get it done yesterday world. Aren't you glad there's one company that can keep up with it all? You got a deal, good. I'm putting you down to deal with Dick. Dick, what's the deal with the deal? Are we dealing? We're dealing. Dave, it's a deal with Don, Dork, and Dick. Dork, it's a deal with Dave, Dick, and Dave. Don, it's a Dork with Dick, Dave, and Doug. Gotta go, Dave. Disconnecting. Gotta go, Dick. Disconnecting. Gotta go, Dan. Disconnecting. Federal Express. When it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. All right. Bring back memories. Absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, um, it. It's sometimes hard, or it's easy to forget like what life was like, you know, um, during the time that these great commercials came out, you know, we're in post-war America. It's the 1980s, you know, there's prosperity in the air again. It's all about big business. Dynasty is on TV. Dallas is on TV. Everything is bigger, better, faster. You know, the, the future's unlimited, but 
you know, if you're a consumer or you're in business, you recognize that things are starting to move faster and you have to react faster. And that's what gives rise to FedEx, right? Like the first real overnight carrier with broad um, distribution that basically revolutionized the way businesses did business. Suddenly, what was impossible, you know, allow six to eight weeks for shipping now was an overnight proposition. Was it expensive? Sure. But when it was important, and that's kind of like when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight, became their tagline, it filled the need and it they articulated, they had a way of articulating, and this was Ali and Gargano was the agency, a very famous agency from the time that, that came up with this. And just was the right message for the moment with this fast talking guy, right? Like it's, it's basically an absurd view of how fast things um, are changing. And what I marvel at is, we're living 20 times the speed that we lived back then. I mean, it seems right. impossible. Like, I mean, and, and the other thing is that when overnight shipping was something that only certain businesses could engage in because it was so expensive, look at today, like with Amazon and everything, like we basically expect to click today and tomorrow it's on my doorstep, right. you know, and it's not just letters, like letters you don't even send anymore you send them via Anomaly. email you yeah. send them you send them via email so there's literally instantaneously sending letters now it's about parcels and packages and it, so it, to me it's a great time capsule spot that shows us like how much we've advanced in a relatively you know in the span of human history you know 30 40 years isn't that long but boy has the world changed you know, you and I have talked many times in the past about how brands and marketers abandoned, abandoned great lines, great taglines, just as they're really becoming part of the culture. This to me is an example of that when you absolutely possibly have has to be there overnight. So I have a question for you, Henry. I mean, I love, I, I, I don't disagree with the word that came out of your mouth. Do you think if they had kept that tagline, it would still be relevant today? I think so. I, you know, I I, it's, it's about, for me, it, it is about that mental availability. And if you ask people, if you did a survey of a hundred people, 40 years old or older, and, and admittedly it's an, it's an older audience, but let's say that they're the people that are responsible for making decisions of who's our parcel shipper going to be or whatever. And you ask them what's FedEx's tagline. I guarantee you that the preponderance, maybe not the majority, but the preponderance will say when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. And when that's the one they remember anyway, whether that's yeah, the one or not, that's what they remember. Exactly. And, and when that happens, that's a pretty good indication that you should probably go back to it or you should have never abandoned it. Like, you right. know, you ask people on and off over the years, what's Burger King's tagline? It's have it your way. And, you know, like I said, they've used it on and off. Um, I, I think the leadership now is pretty cognizant of the fact is this is what we are and it's good. Like why change it? Right. I, I can't tell you what the FedEx tagline is today. I, I don't know what it is, but again, it's an example of marketers and brand folks and clients tiring of a message long before their audience does. It hasn't registered with us as consumers by the time the, the, the brand decides to move on. And that's, they're throwing away equity. But nevertheless, this is a classic spot. I loved it. I remember reading articles and seeing that guy, that fast talking guy. He, he was did a media for... tour. He, 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 he was like on uh, Donahue or whatever was the show. Donnie the Carson. No, he, yeah, I mean, he was famous for, for more than 15 minutes. You know, he got his 15 plus minutes of fame. I, I mean, I don't know what he's gone on to do since then. Maybe nothing, but he, he was a fast talker and he made it work and he, they, they built the spot around him. And it, class, it was a classic example, as you said, of what it was like to live in those days, which now seem quaint, but it, it really worked to set up the, the campaign. So I loved it too. Good stuff, Henry. Good stuff, Howard. He's Henry Gomez. And he's Howard Eibach. And together we're the Brief Brothers. Till next time. Bye-bye.